This thought or title came from an account my brother-in-law gave a few years back. Now the background to this account came from my wife. In his early days, he read a lot and had the capacity to qualify for medical school, which only took the top brightest people. To the extent that my late mother-in-law would have to send him to sleep, for he risked his health, loving his studies so much. All medics tend to be bookworms, as was my brother, who developed a bald patch because the only way he could concentrate was to torture himself by pulling at his hair. So the account goes, he left for the States and worked his way through the barriers and eventually settled there. One day he was accosted by another guy who, obviously driving a less expensive car, asked where did he go wrong. When asked what his response was, he said, I just smiled and walked away. It reminded me of the less privileged or disadvantaged or whatever label you may choose to give the ones who haven't as much as the well-offs. Now someone else said getting well off financially though, some would argue that isn't all there is to success, has nothing to do with luck or formula. But it is about grit, you know, grind, work and work, and sometimes your health suffers. Does hard work result in success? I would contend yes, though some would disagree. But I know if you are enterprising, innovative and studious, you may not be rich, but you will almost always be successful as long as you are not wasteful, careless, or a gambler. So where do we go wrong? Well, practically we refuse to listen to words yes, but observation type of listening. A very rich man was quoted to have said, after comparing his teachers to the traders, that he ditched school because it was obvious who had the most money. So, observation is a potent information source. The society, our actions within it, our words, and silence, speaks. Now the Bible tells us that we are without excuse in Romans chapter 1 verse 20 Psalm 19, Christ's observatory lessons the woman with the alabaster oil, see Luke chapter 7 verse 44, the sky red and lowering, see Matthew chapter 16 verse 3, and many more. So, if we are to listen to the unspoken, we are more guilty of ignoring what is said. When was the last time you picked up the Bible? Do you understand the sacrifices of men that provided the Bible, the writers and preservers, the preachers and the evangelists, the followers and the ones who live out their lives as a testimony to God? See Hebrews chapter 11 verse 37. Does society speak and do you listen? Fiction, reality, all tell us of troubles, and do you only see peace, peace where there is no peace? See Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 11. So what are the things around us that tell us about God? The teeming population, how do they survive if God doesn't provide and direct, rule every heart? He gave to everyone the spirit of enterprise. He who doesn't work shall not eat. See 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. The woman of the house waking up early to provide. See Proverbs chapter 31 verse 15. We read of Paul's journeying after conversion and his pre-conversion zeal of persecution, Philip's preachings, see Acts chapter 8 verse 30, the day of Pentecost, and so on. The scripture is full of men in history who go conquering, who thrive in worship and pursue their business with utmost care and alacrity. Man has always been enterprising, but sadly to an unclean end, mostly determined to subvert and disobey God regardless of his kindness, and deserving of worship. See Psalm 107. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. So what about the things we read of in the Bible? Christ said that the woe of this generation shall be more than those of previous generations. Why? Because they heard and believed. The Queen of the South, the people of Nineveh, see Luke 11, 31 to 32. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. See Matthew 11:18. said the Lord of glory. the grit and heaviness of denying him, in his realm, the provision for our body and soul. Imagine if you live in a city-state and ignore the edicts of the governor or king, who has emissaries and princes that enforce his rule. You can't buy without his graces, for he governs the market, the traders, artisans who work on the products in the market. How are you going to survive? You'll have to leave the city and find another conducive place to live. Regardless of whether you agree with his edicts or he is a despot from senility or mental madness or some physical disease, you have to abide or abort the city. Eh? 
The issue is with God, there is nowhere to go. If in hell, he is there too. See Psalm 139, 8. You cannot escape him, but thankfully, he is the good shepherd with no unrighteousness in him, full of truth. See John 1, 14. So we are safe in him. Your labor is in vain, leading to rejection and judgment if you don't obey God, because you obey your master, the devil. See John chapter 8, verse 44, and 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. You go wrong if you refuse to heed God's call. Remember, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden light. See Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. So come. Remember, he made us in our domain, so he knows what is best for us unlike the evil one who made our burdens heavy. See Genesis chapter 3 verses 16 to 17. By tricking us into disobeying God, and why do we want to continue to labor and thirst yet in vain when we have a remedy for this predicament in the last Adam? Oh, but I am rich or comfortable or happy with my lot. I do not labor, you say? Really, you don't? Remember Nabal, he was stingy and ungrateful and refused to listen to observations and words, for he knew there were marauders in the land, yet his flock was intact. See 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 10. The rich barn owner who yearned for more. See Luke chapter 2 verses 19 to 20. So we see, you have hardness, no charity, and you yearn. You are not comfortable or happy, my friend. The Lord came to this world wearing our flesh. He needn't have come. He is quite happy where he is, in the bosom of heaven with sweet communion amongst the three. See 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Yet he came out of love and mercy, pitying the fallen human race. He came to save the lost. See Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and worked tirelessly and still works to maintain the world. See John chapter 5, verse 17, his people building the new world. See Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. The irony is the people who deny God the most vehemently are the ones who have realized that they cannot get anywhere without hard work. Have you ever tried to fight evil or get out of a hole someone who is unrelenting dug for you? As the words of that popular singer when asked why he doesn't take a break, to which he replied, because my enemies don't. Are you successful? You know what I'm talking about. Are you striving for success? You know how difficult things are. Thankfully, those who are his have his ear and his perfect timing. See Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Patience, conviction, and the Spirit, see 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, otherwise we despair. The Lord is full of compassion and delights to rescue us, having chosen a people for himself, see 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, on whom the evil one has no claim. When he left, the Holy Spirit was given to care for and direct his people, see John chapter 16, verse 7. What else do we need then? knowing that we are not alone in the struggles of life. Let's take the example of the ant as that of obedience and observation. They gather in the summer and have enough all year round, especially in the winter. See Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25. They are not sitting on the ground, but in homes they built, complaining, why winter? Seasons? Why can't we have fun and games summer all year round? By their gathering, they acknowledge a greater being, see Proverbs chapter 6, verse 7, and subject themselves to his edict of seasons and prepare. And will you learn from the ant, or will the ant be wiser than you, O oh man? Look at the size of it, that you will shake a fist at God and say, Why? Where did I go wrong? Rather, accept the situation that man is fallen in need of salvation that is brought by Christ the Lord for you to embrace, and arise from that fallen state to a glorious and heaven-bound existence. The Real Seasons of Man Disobedience and Unbelief, Obedience and Belief The Apostles continued as they were taught, writing, establishing the churches and teaching his people. The Church is the given agency on earth to encourage and harbor his people whilst proclaiming the gospel of truth to the lost. And they taught in writing and preaching the word of God, explaining as to newborns and old in the faith, the fundamentals of the faith, the right conduct of the church, the comforts of being Christ's, the duties we owe, the means of grace and truth, the things to come, 
help in persecution, wisdom, peace, and love, the wrath to come in the ages, including the one to come. We have no continuing city, but seek one to come, as it is written in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. A home not made with hands, as mentioned in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, reserved in the heavens. My friend, you went wrong when you sidestepped the Lord and decided that this world holds sway for you, to acquire comfort and peace. You said, Peace, peace, but there is no peace here, saith the word, as it is written in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 11, especially if you have this question, where you went wrong in you. You've neglected the balm in Gilead, as mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22, the anchor for your sinking soul, the bread of life, and hewed you broken cisterns to scavenge in the murky waters of this world, where there is no satisfaction nor salvation. The Lord, the fountain of living water, as it is written in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, is calling you today. Come to him, cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you, as mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7.